I recently read Manage Your Day to Day by Jocelyn Galai, editor at 99U. If you had a significant project you had to complete in the next two weeks, be it a keynote speech, a school paper, a book proposal, or a software program, how would you optimize your creativity and maximize your productivity over the next 14 days? Jocelyn Galai and her team at 99U consulted some of the smartest people in the productivity space, like Seth Godin, Cal Newport, and Gretchen Rubin, to find some answers. These productivity experts highlighted four critical choices. If you spot these choices in your work life and consistently make the right choices, you'll be well on your way to insane productivity and creativity on your most important project. Choice number one, do a little every day or a whole bunch at once. When life is busy, it's easier to block out a Saturday or Sunday to work on a project than make time for it each day. But if you spread that same block of time across several days, you'll be significantly more productive thanks to the power of frequency. Working on a project every day will make you more likely to get started, less likely to be interrupted, and more likely to have great ideas. First, approaching several hours of work feels overwhelming, which leads to avoidance. And when you know you have several hours of work, you tend to believe that delaying an hour isn't a big deal. But if you plan to work every day, even just for a few minutes, you create a work cadence and create momentum you can bring into the next day. It helps you bypass procrastination. Next, when you work a little every day, it's far easier to temporarily block out distractions since most things that demand your attention can wait 30 to 45 minutes while you put in your project work. And lastly, the more frequently you work on a project, the more your subconscious works on tackling problems related to your projects between work sessions, which leads to more creative insights. Therefore, whatever time you have to complete a project, divide it across several days and put in at least 15 minutes of project work every day, no matter what. Author Gretchen Rubin says, day by day we build our lives, and day by day we can take steps toward making real the magnificent creations of our imaginations. Choice number two, which work mode should I enter first? Work life oscillates between two modes, reactive and creative. In reactive mode, we respond to problems and requests from others. In creative mode, we temporarily block out the world and focus on creating original work. We all tend to gravitate toward reactive work because checking the email is like pulling a slot machine lever. We never quite know if our inbox will be full of boring messages or exciting developments until we check it. However, going into your emails and messages and entering reactive mode creates a tension residue for the rest of the day which impairs your ability to concentrate on complex projects. That's because when you start answering people's requests, part of your mind is left thinking about what you just said, what else you could have said, and what people's responses might be. We must give our highest priority projects our freshest attention. And that occurs in the morning when distractions are minimal and a full night of sleep has just restored our ability to focus deeply. If you wanna make progress on your projects, you must be purposely neglectful in the morning. That is, you must postpone your responses to so-called urgent requests. As author Mark McGinnis puts it, it's better to disappoint a few people over small things than to surrender your dreams for an empty inbox. Otherwise, you're sacrificing your potential for the illusion of professionalism. If you want to achieve optimal productivity and creativity, create first, react second. Choice number three, should I be rigid or flexible? That is, should I plan to execute my first project work session with military precision, or should I allow myself the freedom to start when, where, and how I wish, since having autonomy is energizing? Well, the answer is both. You should begin with strict discipline, then let your mind create freely. The most productive and creative people have learned that certain levels of discipline are needed to unleash creativity. As author David Brooks put it, Great creative minds think like artists, but work like accountants. Aim to execute the first five minutes of your project work sessions in the exact same way every time. Stephen King, for instance, sits at the same desk at the same time every day, takes the same vitamin pill, and listens to the same music. He then rearranges the papers on his desk the same way to kickstart his creative writing block. King says, the cumulative purpose of doing these things the same way every day seems to be a way of saying to the mind, you're going to be dreaming soon. Starting the same way every time is a form of self-induced Pavlovian training 
where you associate a creative work state to a specific starting sequence so that your brain notices when you're executing the sequence and begins automatically tuning out distractions and honing in on the upcoming task. Over the past few months, I've repeated the same series of actions every workday and find it easier and easier to slip into a deep and creative work state. My sequence is feel my watch buzz at 5.15 a.m., then step out of bed and put on the same hoodie and sweatpants, then walk to the fridge to grab the same Topo Chico carbonated water, then walk upstairs to sit in the same chair and open a new Word document to continuously type questions I have for the upcoming work session for one minute. This writing and questioning period stokes my curiosity and puts me in a creative work mode where I freely explore different ways to get to my project objective. So I pose the following question to you. What sequence of actions will you execute to reliably trigger a deep and creative work state? Choice number four, sustain or cycle? If you can extend your work project session beyond 20 minutes, you must cycle your attention by stepping away from your work at least three times every hour. Why? Well, the longer you remain seated in one place while working, the more your breathing shallows. And shallow breathing means the brain is getting less oxygen. Stepping away to get a drink of water, walk around the block, or go to the bathroom to splash water on your face allows you to consciously regulate your breathing and get oxygen to your brain. The instant you get up from your work to initiate your mini work break, perform box breathing like Navy SEALs do before combat. This involves a deep four second inhale, a four second hold, a four second exhale, and another four second hold. Or you could do a 5.5 second breath cycle. Simply think, one, two, three, four, five, in, one, two, three, four, five, out, one, two, three, four, five, in. Research from the University of Pavia in Italy showed that subjects who alternated between a 5.5 second inhale and 5.5 second exhale experienced improved blood flow to the brain, lower heart rates, and a stabilized nervous system, which indicated their bodies were performing at peak efficiency. Movement during a break can help replenish the neurochemicals you need for focus. Dr. Andrew Huberman explains that physical movement activates pathways in the brain that increase dopamine, which is the basis for epinephrine and all neural energy. In other words, a short period of movement will provide the fuel you need to focus intensely and continue creating and producing at a high level. In the end, if you're on a quest to be more productive, make the following four choices. One, create a daily work rhythm instead of saving important project work for one or two days a week. Two, focus on your creative projects before entering reactive mode. Three, start your focus sessions with a rigid ritual so you condition your mind to block out distractions and focus on a task. And number four, cycle your attention during your focus sessions so that you can focus more intensely for longer. Let those four choices dictate your day-to-day -day work schedule to enhance your focus and creativity. That was the core message that I gathered from Manager Day to Day by Jocelyn Galai in 99U. This book has an impressive collection of ideas from some of the best minds in the productivity space. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.